let's yeah, move on to, to the Dadaab uh, refugee camp question. It's one that we're engaging our viewers with. Remember to keep your thoughts coming on whether you support the closure of the camp. So DP says three months uh, the state is giving the UN to close this particular refugee camp. It has been described as a haven uh, of terrorism. I'll start with you, Edwin, your thoughts on that directive. It is one of uh, the more lazy approaches to problem solving that we have seen in this government. Uh, you cannot have blanket condemnation of uh, a people who have sought refuge in your own country. And uh, the conventions uh, are very clear that you cannot send back people uh, who have sought refuge in your own country. Article 33 of the UN Declaration on the Status of the Refugees, uh, which uh, espouses the principle of non refoulement which uh, does not allow you to do that. And uh, the problem is that if there are any people who are seeking refuge amongst the refugees and perpetuating crime, the law allows you to pursue those people individually because they, uh, you know, perpetuate the, crimin uh, the criminal activity as individuals. You cannot go and have a blanket order that uh, we are going to close down this camp and we are going to send everyone back Especially because we have a responsibility, international responsibility under the agreements that Kenya has signed Kenya to claim. follow the proper procedure if we're going to close down the camp. So I believe it is one of those uh, lazy approaches to policy that we have seen from this government time and again. Okay, where uh, I, I think um, there is credible evidence that some of our problems emanate from this camp. Why not deal with those problems? And uh, I don't necessarily agree with saying that we, we, we close it in three months because we have international obligations mm -hmm. and our constitution is also very clear that uh, some of the uh, international conventions that we have ratified are part of our laws. So maybe the uh, deputy president was talking again out of the frustrations Kenyans are feeling. So we are saying an emotional executive, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, 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 no. Because you keep talking about they carry the, the heat anger. of the moment. They this carry the anger of the people of Kenya. In fact, if you put it on a referendum today, whether we'll toss out those people, they'll be out day one. But we are saying uh, part of a problem are also emanating from there. So the long-term position is actually to eliminate those camps. Not necessarily within three months, but problems are there and they are complex problems that uh, require, and they have been there for too long, but we have to have fidelity to our international obligations. Okay. So again, the, the Deputy President will be shown what the law says <laughs> and what is good for the country and what's good for our image outside. And, and so we'll do it. And they will have other statements saying that now we will take a longer period no, of time we'll, to we'll do, do this. No, we'll do it diplomatically. Let, let's hear from the Senator, then we come to you, Secretary. Uh, I think it's all about competence issues, you know. I'm telling you the truth. I've said this on this program many a time. Uh, you hear of the Kibaki regime where people will go with their foolish recommendations to him and he will tell them, upuzi, upuzi, toa, wacha hiyo. Because of his longevity in politics, his, his knowledge base that had, and his firmness, knowing what a country must entail, what leadership, uh, what, what directions leadership must steer. It's like uh, if, uh, if you give an intern a job to run a media house, there, there's just definitely going to be a lot of loopholes. But if you give it to somebody who has withered over the processes, and for me, let's face it, maybe the challenges of leadership uh, are becoming a bit overwhelming. To, say, to, to hear what they're saying, assuming that's literally the, the, the position uh, that you're always angry, you're always emotional, you're always uh, reflecting it in your policy and your statements. But for me, I think, I'm very, apart from the, the internal, uh, the dynamics that uh, we want to you know, po portion blame and appear to be working, I think it's also a strategy to blackmail the international community. So you'll find, uh, finally, when Obama comes here, you're negotiating around da da around, you know, the, when the Brits come here, they negotiate around the renewal of their, of their contract uh, in terms of uh, keeping their troops in, in check. So I think there's, now you find all this anxiety around, because you, you know the rider to it is that if you don't exclude them, we will exclude them ourselves. Okay. So, I think, so I think it's partly also to get that international attention mm -hmm. and to try now, you know, negotiate for support on a broad range of issues. So a lot of statements, like Jen, being made without being thought out fully? I would not say that there are statements being made without uh, serious thought. First and foremost, my colleagues are talking uh, very, uh, very correctly, but applying it to the wrong situation. About uh, what the deputy president said, let us make a distinction between a referral and a disbandment of a refugee camp. The law prohibits the referral of refugees back to the state they're fleeing from. 
the law does not stop you from saying we disband this camp from having it here and take the point A and taking it to point B. So perhaps it would have been more mature and more uh, interesting of them to ask what did the deputy president mean. It could have meant that we remove it from the dub and take it to a more neutral place where we can control it, see who is getting into the camp, who is leaving the camp, no, profile he, he them properly. No, he was clear about so, them being uh, removed from the country, getting he, buses he, and getting them shipped out. Uh, uh, we are not talking about referral because that calls for uh, international obligations. We are talking about disbanding the camp. And if we are going to refer Isn't that people, relocating the if problem? We are going to re no, we are not relocating the problem. If that is the problem as you see it, so you want to move it to where exactly? Sophie, exactly? Get, me to, get me correctly. Yes. When we talk about referral and disbandment of the camp, first we are talking about two different things. Mm -hmm. and secondly, we are saying that if we have the, uh, uh, maybe the physical location of the place makes it difficult to control who gets in and who gets out and who does what. So if we have taken it to a place that is more neutral, like, that we can control <coughs> it, like where? that we know who goes, gets in and who goes out, okay? It will be more difficult for strangers to infiltrate and But now you're already changing what the pre deputy president said. That is not what he said. He was very clear about where these people should go back home. He did not when talk when about When we talk of taking them, people back home, of course, as we disband, we get months. the illegal immigrants, the people who are there without purpose, those we must repatriate. We only have obligations to those who have come in as lawful refugees. We don't have uh, an obligation to protect the, uh, the, 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 the outlaws who have sneaked into our country to conduct uh, acts of terror.